Thanks for stopping by guys and welcome back to Scrap Mechanic. Now today we're going to be looking at a creation that I started myself and then I finished it on a stream. So some of you may already be familiar with this build. This is the Able Light Cargo Ship. Now I don't do very many flyers. I have been doing a lot more recently with the Helicore project that I've been doing. But I don't think I've ever built a large ship like this. I, I've done one. I've done the research ship, but it was a hovercraft and not really a flyer. Now, a few things I do want to note. I kind of want to take a look around it first on the outside and then we'll go on the inside. And then I also really want to talk about kind of how this ship works. Because this thing has something very special in it. It has a simple flight computer, which helps keep the craft as stable as it is. So coming from the front, the nose is very pointed and you will notice that it is layered in two sections. The upper section being kind of a decorative shell that's really nice and smooth. The bottom section being the darker area. It's a, it's a lot less smooth, it's a lot more rough around the edges. I wanted this kind of distinction of the decorative shell and kind of the, how you want to say, more rough and rugged underbelly of the ship. And here you will also notice the thrusters. These are the external thrusters. There's a set here and there's a set internal inside the main engine compartment, I guess you could call it. And I really do like how these look externally. Even though the other ones are a bit cleaner looking, I like this kind of mechanical feel that the external ones give. And you can see them moving and pulsing slightly to keep its balance. And I really do like that. It gives the ship a bit of life. It gives it like a breath almost. You can see it just slowly moving. And as we come back, you can see some of the other features like the windows and the little hangar bay are covered with a black to kind of make them pop against the much brighter orange. Coming to the back, you will see a cargo lift as well. And there's not much else here at the back other than the engines. I'm not going to go to the other side because it is identical on both sides. Um, during the stream, some people did want me to include a ramp. However, I did decide to go with this cargo lift. I thought the cargo lift would be a lot easier, a lot better. But in future ships, I think a lift would be a nice addition. Just because it's easier to get up and down quickly with a um, ramp rather than the lift. I think I misspoke at some point. I do want to add a ramp in future projects so that's easier to get up and down. Now if the ship was landed, normally you'd use the hangar bay here to get in and out. I'm calling it a hangar bay but it's kind of a small storage compartment and kind of the main doors as well. You can't really land a ship in there, it's not that big unfortunately. But because it is in a high hover, we are going to have to use this door or the lift, I should say. Um, some people will notice this craft does not have any sort of landing gears. I did make a version with landing gears. However, the issue being whenever this craft is on the ground, it lags a lot. And since it is such a good hovercraft, it's something that you can just leave hovering and you don't really need to land it. So I never put landing gears on it. Or I should say I took off the landing gears I added. So we're up on the lift, let's go ahead and hit the button, and we will be entered into the main cargo bay. This is the larger of the two cargo bays. The kind of idea that's in my head about what the ship is, is it's kind of the, uh, how do I say, small businessman's ship. There's the larger cargo bay here, which this could also be completely empty to allow for a lot more storage, but in this situation it does have some passenger seating for six passengers and as we come up here you can see one of the windows that looks out of the ship you do have a bit of a stairway that goes up to the top we can come up here in a minute and then coming down the main stairway you enter into the main body and you can go down even further into the lower storage bay and you also have these two large hangar doors like I said before not really a hangar but I'm going to be calling it that just because that's what sounds right and walking up to the ship, you will see the actual pilot seat. Now, the computer, as I called it earlier, is actually located right here below the seat. 
I'll be looking into it more in depth, but it does have two major sensors, which are a gyro and a sensor that detects any sort of vertical movement in the ship. And it uses these two inputs to get the ship to auto hover like it is now. The ship is not detecting the ground. It is not detecting anything else. It's not modded. It is purely looking at its tilt using a gyro and it's using this other sensor to see if it's raising or falling at all and it corrects based on that. So real quick with the controls, this is WAS and D controlled. Um, you do have other controls. One lowers the ship. So if I press one, the ship will start to lower. Two raises the ship. Go on, go up. Three is your main thrusters and it also, you can see the lag what happens. Um, and it is also used for activating the computer. The computer is not active when the ship is on the ground because that would mess up some of its logic a little bit. As you can see, the ship is self-leveling and correcting itself. We are raising a little bit, but the computer should kick in and level us out here in a second. There we are. We're nice and level. We're nice and stable. Four is the little um, cargo elevator there in the back. Bring that back up. Let the ship stabilize a little bit. Lowering the lift did seem to destabilize us just a little bit, but not enough to cause any major issues. So the ship is stable enough to walk around it in midair. You can pretty much do whatever you want on this ship. Uh, let's go ahead and get back into the seat and let's try and fly it around because it's kind of just been sitting in one spot and I think just showing it flying will give you an idea of how well this works. You'll see it bobs and it weaves a little bit. It's not perfectly balanced in every si single way, but I do actually kind of like the little motions that the ship has, the little bit of a rock, the little bit of a twitch that you get from the thrusters. It makes the ship feel alive in my opinion. It's not eerily still it has a little bit of a rocket you can tell you're on a boat you're on a ship of some sort and it breathes to some effect when it actually moves the thrusters up and down if you watch here the thrusters will slowly move and this is just a result of the computer making minor adjust adjustments constantly to try and keep in a perfect hover let's go ahead and fly around you know what, let's head to the top of this little plateau over here, this little mountain. Let's go ahead and lower our elevation. Hopefully we don't strike a tree. This isn't probably the best thing to fly around trees. It's mostly kind of meant for the open skies. But I think this should be a good challenge for the system. Let's increase our elevation because we're coming a little fast. The computer will try and keep you level and balanced, but you do have to make minor adjustments while flying simply because you are flying and the computer is not meant for that specific task. It will help you, but it won't fix everything. So now we're over this little plot of land. Let's back up a little bit to slow our down. And now that we're stationary, let's go ahead and lower. Let's go ahead and lower our little cargo elevator. I'll move forward a little bit because we're a little bit close to that mountain. Oh, increased thrust. I went way too fast decreasing thrust. Oops, that was a bit of my fault, actually. Let's get up in the air and let's, uh, you know what, let's go right about here. You have to be a bit careful not to hold on to one of the uh, elevation controls for too long. There we go. Don't want to touch the ground, but we do want to keep it just a little bit above. And we can head back. I can bring the elevator up. Hop onto it and send it back down. So now that we've taken a look at the outside and the inside, let's go ahead and look at how this actually works. Let me spawn in the sensors that it uses. And here is the set of logic that is inside the craft. 
Now here you can see the gyro, two axis gyro, and here you can see the little sensor that detects elevation, or I should say uh, vertical movement. So the gyro is something a lot of people know and a lot of people already understand, so I'm not going to touch on it too much. It kind of works like you would expect it to. Now this is something that took a little bit of trial and error to get working. This can tell the craft if it is raising or lowering, and based on that it can adjust the thrust accordingly. As you can see it is flashing up and down, and that's just because the gyro is causing this thing to rock slightly. That's also why the larger ship rocks a little bit and gives it that movement that I like. So what is going on here? You have two pistons, one that pushes down, one that pushes up, and they are extended by a piston so that these two pistons so the two springs, I think I misspoke, there's a spring pushing down, spring pushing up, and they're forced together by a piston. These two springs are constantly pushing against each other. One of them is a one power, let me get in there see if I can see it, nope. One of them is a one power, the other is a two power, but the two power is being counteracted by the weight that's on it. So what this basically means is this block of weight is neutrally buoyant in space. It does not fall, it does not raise, it is constantly in the same spot. So when the ship moves, that block stays in place, but then the ship moves and it changes which sensor this little white block is in front of. And based off that, the ship can detect if it is raising or falling. And on the back here, you have a W, A, S, and D converter up here, and then you have my Helicore here as well. Now, the Helicore has all of the suspension glitches on it, which allow the ship to do minute changes and tip it, and how should I say, correct for minor issues. Now, another feature this has is it does have variable thrusters, which is how you get up and down in the air, and it also allows the ship to correct for weight changes. So these little suspension glitches can only do so much to help the ship. Everything else is done by the thrusters themselves. The thrusters themselves can adjust to weight. Now, right now it's only on two sets. So the front is a set, the back is a set. And since the ship is perfectly symmetrical when you look down the front of it, I didn't add any sort of left to right. So to give you an idea of what I mean by this, let me hop back in the ship and let me go a bit in the air. Now, while I was streaming, you would have seen this as well because while I was building the ship, I didn't have the ship on a lift the most for most of the build. I did have the ship hovering while I was working on it and the little flight computer was able to adjust to the changes in weight on its own without the need to rebalance any of the thrusters. So now that I'm up in the air a little bit, let's come back down here. Let's go ahead and grab something heavy like metal and let's go ahead and just build a big chunk of it. Now, what is about to happen? What's about to happen is the gyro is going to detect the ship is tilting. There's a lot more weight at the back, so it's starting to tip the nose up and the back is gonna go down. The gyro first is going to tell the helicore to try and compensate with the suspension glitches. When that isn't enough to fix it, it's then gonna tell the engines to change thrust. It's gonna tell the front engines to decrease and the rear engines to increase. At the exact same time, the sensor that detects any sort of vertical movement is going to sense the weight and it's going to say the ship is falling, increase all thrust. So the front set of thrusters are going to get a decrease order from the gyro and an increase order from the vertical sensor, which is going to mean they're going to do nothing. The rear engines are getting a increased thrust from the gyro and an increased thrust from the vertical sensor so they are going to increase while the front stays the same. 
Hopefully that makes sense. So if I increase the weight, normally this would throw a ship off balance, but instead the thrusters just increase to compensate. And we're still perfectly balanced, perfectly in the air, flying just fine. Oh, and I fell off. Unfortunate. But because I know the ship is stable, I'm not worried about it going anywhere. I just got to get back on it. Ooh. Ooh. Now I just got to make my way around. And as I didn't decrease the... Uh, weight it'll also compensate as well so if I quickly remove all of this you can watch the thrusters go back down now we will start moving slightly because it isn't perfect but it is self-correcting and there's not many ships I know of that can actually do this a lot of ships and a lot of shipbuilders make the thrusters perfectly to that ship if there's any changes of weight, they have to rebalance weight and they have to rebalance thrusters to get it working well. This, the flight computer, does everything automatically. The only thing you have to do is tell it up, down, and everything else is automated. So I'm not 100% finished with this little flight computer. I am making some changes to make it a bit better and a bit more universal for more ships. This was kind of the first trial of it though, and I'm really happy with how it turned out. So let's go ahead and quickly head up to the ship. And overall, I can't be happier with the functionality. It works beautifully. You can walk around in the ship and it won't throw you out if you're moving, you do have to be careful, but while it's in this hover mode, you don't have to worry about anything. You don't have to worry about the ship going anywhere. I can stand out here and feel comfortable that the ship's not going to just throw me off. See how far I can go. Whoop. And it's not going to throw me off. It's perfectly here. Looks wise, I do like how it looks. It could have been a little bit better here and there. There's some details I might like to add in the future, but... It is a complete success in every way I could have helped, hoped for. So with that being said, unfortunately I am out of time for this episode. If you guys did enjoy this little spacecraft and would like to see more of these and possibly even bigger ones, please leave a like. If you have any suggestions, leave them in the comments down below. Enjoy the channel, enjoy what I'm doing. Please subscribe, it helps out a lot. And right now, shares help the channel the most. So if you do want to help the channel, please share this episode with a friend. But I am going to end it here. Thanks for stopping by, thanks for sticking around, and until next time, peace.